Moderator of Face the Nation, Margaret Brennan, joins us from the White House. Margaret, what do we know about the red flags uh, that popped up during Kushner's background check? Uh, well, what I'm told is there are no red flags per se, but there are significant delays uh, in this final approval process. And that's why uh, Kushner's security level clearance was downgraded. He still maintains one, but it's temporary, just interim security status. Uh, what we do know is that in his ongoing role as an advisor to the president, multiple officials have raised concerns that they think he could be manipulated and maybe just too na naive since he doesn't have uh, the experience dealing with some of these complex foreign policy issues that he's advising on. But that is not the reason for his security clearance to not have been fully uh, approved. Uh, what the president of the United States said during a press conference on Friday is that Kushner, along with many others, have uh, complex financial transactions and information, and he also blamed a broken system. Now, as you mentioned, the president's son-in-law was very involved in the Middle East peace process. His portfolio included that and the Office of American Innovation, as well as a number of uh, other aspects and priorities from President Trump. So what does this mean for his portfolio moving forward? Well, the fact that uh, Jared Kushner's uh, security clearance was downgraded will inevitably have some impact on his portfolio because it does touch some of these very sensitive foreign policy issues, including Mideast peace. Uh, what you constantly hear from foreign officials is that they like having direct access to the president's son-in-law, in part because he gets back to them quickly and because they can bypass some of the protocols, some of the diplomatic processes uh, that foreign countries go through. But the reason that those processes exist is because they typically go through experienced diplomats or through some of the agencies. So because of this, uh, that is why some of the uh, sort of rank and file within the national security community have been at times alienated by uh, the key role given to the president's son-in-law. He's been put in, in top positions when it comes to dealing with Mexico, with China, with Saudi Arabia, and there is concern that he perhaps may be in over his head. Of course, sources close to Kushner uh, deny that there is anything untoward when it comes to his background check and just say this is all a matter of delay. And also, uh, before we let you go, Margaret, on Tuesday, a Krishna ally, Brad Pascal, was named the campaign manager of the president's re-election campaign. Any possibility or, or discussions that Jared could perhaps leave the White House and move on to help on that front? Well, uh, Brad Prescal, who you mentioned there, uh, did run the digital strategy for the president's successful campaign, and Jared Kushner was a key part of that. And in fact, Brad has mentioned how key Jared was in putting him in the position and recognizing that digital was going to be an advantage advantage for them. Uh, in fact, they ran such an unusual campaign, they spent a lot of their money on online targeted ads through Facebook and through pushing uh, very targeted information through social media. They didn't go through the typical channels of spending on TV ads, something that uh, the president's opponent, Hillary Clinton, did do and was less successful at ultimately uh, getting out those voters in the key states they needed to win. Uh, and so if you were to see Jared Kushner once again take on a role in the campaign, I imagine it would be in this space where he did have a, a lot of success. But at this point, uh, we haven't heard that he has any plans to leave the administration at this time. All right. Margaret Brennan at the White House. Thank you.